So the microscope. Uh, we are going to label the parts of the microscope and add in any functions. The microscopes that we use are called compound light microscopes. They're compound because they have two different sets of lenses and they're light microscopes because they use light. The first set of lenses up at the top is the, uh, the eyepiece, which may also be referred to as the ocular lens. The eyepiece itself uh, supplies a 10x magnification. Most of the eyepieces on microscopes have a pointer, which allows us to communicate about what we see in the microscope. Um, as you can see in this picture that the lens itself is set into this structure here called the eyepiece. And this is where you're going to put your eye when you're looking through the microscope. Um, I strongly recommend that you try to keep both of your eyes open when looking through the microscope and just cover one of your eyes with your hand. The next part is the body tube. Some of the body tubes are straight up and down as you see here. Some of them have a tilt to them as you could see in this next picture. The body tube maintains a distance between the lenses and it allows the light to pass up to the eyepiece. So it con concentrates the light and uh, moves it up to your eye. It doesn't do anything to help you magnify the image. Moving down, we have the nose piece. The nose piece may be referred to as the revolving nose piece or the rotating nose piece uh, because it does move. The nose piece contains the objectives and turns the objectives, which allows you to change magnification. So most of our microscopes have three objective lenses and you can see them off of this uh, nose piece. With these three different objectives, you're gonna want to change from one power to the next and you will use the nose piece to do that. Make sure that your nose piece clicks into place. So you have to click the objective that you want into place. If not, you're going to be looking at darkness. Next, we have the objectives themselves, which may also be referred to as the magnifiers. Most of our microscopes do have three of them. The 4X is the smallest of the objectives and it has the lowest power. Um, usually this is referred to as the scanning lens. Next, we have the middle size, uh, and some people refer to this as middle or medium power. Uh, but for us, we call this the low power, and this is the one that most of us will start with is the low power. And then the largest size objective is the highest power, which is called the high power objective, and ours has a magnification of 40x. So one of the things that you need to add to your notes is how you determine total magnification. How you determine total magnification is you multiply the power of the eyepiece with the power of the objective lens. So you can see in the first one, the scanning lens, the eyepiece is a 10X, multiply that by four, which is the power of the scanning lens, and you end up with a total magnification of 40X. The low power, uh, 10x eyepiece multiplied by 10x of the objective lens gives you 100 times the magnification. And then for the high power, we will take the 10x from the eyepiece, multiply it by the 40x of the high power, and that gives us 400 times total magnification. So we'll be looking at the specimen at 400 times larger than what it is. Next are the arm and the base. The arm and the base, both of them are used to carry the microscope. So you put your dominant hand on the arm. And as you can see by these two illustrations in this picture that um, they don't always look the same. So you put your dominant hand on the arm and your other hand underneath the base, and then you carry the microscope close to you.
Now the arm and the base are structural parts. They're supported parts of the microscope. The arm supports the upper portions of the microscope, the body tube, um, and the base supports the entire microscope. The stage and the stage clips. The stage, most of them uh, on our microscopes are a square. There are a few microscopes that have a circular uh, stage, but it is a platform on which you're going to place your slide. The stage clips are going to be used to hold the slide in place. Next we have the diaphragm and the lamp or the light. Now in this version of this picture, we can see that the diaphragm is a lever. Um, not all of the microscopes have a diaphragm as a lever. Sometimes it's a dial under the stage and then the light source. Now the lamp, the light source, most of our microscopes have to be plugged in. Some of them can be charged. Um, but you do need light to see the specimen. The diaphragm is what you're going to use to regulate the amount of light coming from your lamp. So how much of that light do you want to pass through your specimen up to your eye through the body tube? So most of the microscopes we have have a circular diaphragm like this that is attached to the bottom of the stage. And you can see it looks like an old timey uh, pencil sharpener that some of the holes are tiny and some of them are bigger. So the tiny ones allow a little bit of light and the bigger ones allow in more light. So this is something that you have to adjust based upon whether or not you're using low or high power or just your personal preference. Then to the knobs, the coarse adjustment and the fine adjustment knob. Now in this model from our picture that we have in our notes, both of the knobs are together in one spot. That's pretty common. The coarse adjustment knob is the bigger one and the fine adjustment is the smaller one set inside of the coarse adjustment knob. Now, sometimes they're separate, as you can see in the picture to the right. The coarse adjustment knob being the larger one and the fine adjustment knob is always the smaller one. So the coarse adjustment knob makes large adjustments. Most of our microscopes, when you move the coarse adjustment knob, it moves your body tube, but some of them, when you move the coarse adjustment knob, it actually mo moves the stage. Now, once you get your um, lenses close to your specimen, then it's time to sharpen the image. So when you look at it, it might be fuzzy. Um, if it is fuzzy, you can use the tiny little knob there, the fine adjustment knob to sharpen the image. Um, if you use the fine adjustment knob and it's still blurry, then you'll have to readjust using your coarse adjustment knob and start over again.